Hello, this is Rob at Reason101.net and I am here to show you another tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial I am going to delve into using um, key triggers, MIDI key triggers to uh, trigger your patterns. Um, I showed you how to do it with the matrix and that's one way to do it. So let's shut all this stuff off. And now I'm going to show you another way that you can do this um, using the Thor step sequencer. So let's uh, open up a combinator. Let's uh, remove all the labels here. Okay. All right. Inside here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a 14 2 mixer. Underneath that, we're going to create um, a, let's see, let's create a Thor subtractor. Underneath that, let's create a. Um, hold down shift and create a Thor and then also lastly let's um, create no actually that's all we're gonna need for right now okay so this concept is a little simpler than the previous concept what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn around you got the main uh, output going to the mixer you're now gonna take um, you're gonna open up Thor and you're gonna take the note from the step sequencer and that's gonna go up to the CV and you're going to take the gate, and that's going to go into your gate velocity. Okay, now let's flip it around. Um, let us initialize Thor. So let's completely initialize it. Now what you're going to do is you're going to use this step sequencer to trigger it. So let's add a random pattern in there. Let's have this up to repeat. Let's have this going forward. Let's have the octave full, and let's randomize it again. Okay, now what we're going to do is, um, there's two methods you can do with uh, Thor. What you can do is you can automatically choose C2 as your key, and then what you can do is you can go down here and you can take your button 1, and the amount destination is going to be going to the step sequencer trig. So, what that's going to do when you... Um, press the button here, or actually when you press your key, which is your uh, C2 key over here, it's going to run the pattern. Lift your hand off and it turns off. So it's on, off. Um, the other way you can do it is you can not use the C2 key and you can go up into the programmer here, take your subtractor, don't let it receive notes, go to Thor. Actually, you shouldn't let it receive notes anyway, so turn that off for your subtractor. On Thor, you can um, have it just select the C2 key so that any other key that I press on the piano won't do anything. Okay, now instead of button one, what you're going to do is you're going to take your um, MIDI key gate and that's going to go 100 amount to the, to the start of the, to start triggering the step sequencer. So when you press it down, it has the same effect. And it bypasses the button. Now, personally, I think doing the button method is a little easier because um, you don't have to do any programming in the actual um, Combinator programmer. You can actually leave this all the way on, all the way up. And you can just go down here and choose C2. That's just, it just seems like an easier method in my mind. And then once you have that, all you need to do is go in here, select both these devices, duplicate them, okay, and move this key up by one. So you've got two different keys. Now let's just change this out a little bit. Uh, let's turn on oscillator two, change the mix around, turn up FM a little bit. And now you've got two different patterns that are going to be playing. And also what we probably should do is just randomize the pattern here again. So now you're going to have two different patterns. You're going to have one on C, um, C minus two, and then the other one on C sharp minus two. Uh, don't we have another one on there? Oh, maybe the routing's not done. That's right, the outputs. The output has to go from the subtractor into another channel here. Flip it around, and then we can play it. And you can play them both together. 
The nice thing about this is that it's instantaneous and it triggers. That's the real key here. You'll notice that every time that I press the W key or the C, uh, what is it, C sharp minus two key, it's going to automatically re-trigger this. So it starts, stops, but then it's over here on step 11, but it's going to go right back to one when I press it again. Okay, so that's a nice way that you can key trigger things. You can duplicate this, these devices as many times as you want, and you will get um, a different uh, pattern, or you can put a different sound, different device, whatever you want that Thor to be triggering, it's going to be um, instantaneous. And that's what happens. Um, the nice thing about this is you can play it live too. So when you're playing it live, you, whatever key you're pressing, it'll play that pattern. Whenever you take your hand off, it'll, it'll stop playing the pattern. Now there's one other thing that this thing can't do. Um, if you wanted to set up a lot of devices across the board, uh, you'd have to have uh, more fingers than just 10 fingers, let's say. So to get around that, what you can do is there's a way that you can latch on and you can have the pattern hold so that it keeps playing. So when you press down on a key, it starts triggering. And then when you press down on that same key again, it stops triggering. And I'm going to show that in the next uh, video tutorial that I put together for you. So uh, for right now, this is just a quick way that you can start and stop your patterns based on which keys you press. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, again, I'm Rob and come back and visit me at reason101.net. Thanks for watching.